So I have some uh, interesting announcements. But first, um, I have a, a, my favorite comment from last week, which was actually very helpful. It came from a guy named uh, Vitor. Vitor Gabriel. And Vitor Gabriel uh, commented and said, Nice work, man. Just go ahead and be strong. Don't give up with a happy face. And he said, My tips to improve the channel, uh, the channel, etc., is find better illumination, put a low and quiet music in the background, and make more flashy titles and thumbnails. Um, and that he's working to improve his English. I thought your English was really good, uh, Vitor. Uh, but so you know what? Uh, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. So, music. Hey, it's Steve Boyle, and this is week nine of I It's End Sunday. Nine weeks of I It's End Sunday. Oliver. All right, you don't want to do it today. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to face pound me today. All right, so um, uh, last night I performed a new poem in Silver Lake called Profanity, or Find an Open-Minded Audience, and I think it went well. It was a lot of fun, um, and I'll be posting the video uh, later. I just got to figure out what I'm going to do with it. I have like two camera angles to work with, so I'm going to try to. You know what? Never mind. You'll see it, maybe. But uh, yeah, I'm working on that video, so look for that uh, this sometime this week when I'm done making it look fancy and stuff. I just signed with um, Broadband TV and Huffington Post. They just launched a channel called Outspeak, so I am now uh, an affiliate with um, Outspeak. And with it came all these fancy programs that I get to use for free, including a free music channel. So this music is free! Uh, I want to thank um, Huffington Post and Broadband TV for, for finding my channel. Uh, that has everything to do with you guys, so thank you so much for supporting and getting it noticed that I get to improve it now with like cool stuff. So uh, Vitor, thank you very much. Um, thank you for, for um, you know wanting the, the channel to be better. Uh, and let's get into some emails. The two emails I have today. Oliver, are you ready? He was born ready, or sewed ready. I guess just sewed ready. So actually, my first email comes from Vitor. <laughs> I didn't even notice that until right now. So Vitor, you are the man. Uh, and he said, hey, my name is Vitor. Uh, he's 16, he lives in Bra I live in Brazil, and I have a crush uh, on a guy for, I've had a crush on a guy for a year and a half. Everyone knows that, except for him, uh, he doesn't notice my existence at all. All I know how to deal with, uh, I don't know how to deal with that and finally get over it, because like a guy that you can't have, or liking a guy that you can't have is very depressing. Um, so my question is, you already had a qu crush, question mark. If yes, how did you deal with that? P.S. Sorry if I made mistakes, I'm still improving my English, just forget it. And um, keep going with the channel and good luck. Okay, so Vitor, uh, since you helped me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my best to help you. This is a really hard question, I'm not gonna lie. Crushes are really, really difficult to get through. Um, and they can last years, and I don't think they ever fully go away. So you're in it for the long haul, probably. Um, but just don't let it ruin your self-image, you know? You want them more than everything. I know what a really brutal crush feels like. Um, feel free to jump in at any time. See, Oliver's never had a crush. He's blessed. The good thing is that you know that you're capable of loving somebody, uh, even if they don't think that you exist, which is like an incredible thing by itself, I'd say. Um, so it might be just something that you have a couple years and then, you know, you meet another person and you fall in love and then you realize that a crush and being in love um, are two different things. And I think we call them crushes because they crush your soul. So Vitor, uh, just hang in there, man. I mean, I, it'll get easier with time, uh, especially if it's unreciprocated, it'll get like easier. But if he like, I don't know, it could be worse. He could be get like throwing you signals and stuff and leading you on only to say no, no. Um, so yeah, dude. I mean, it's just part of life. You're gonna you're gonna crush on people, and it's gonna suck, and it's gonna hurt when they don't return it. So just keep it up, man. I mean, just keep your keep your head up, you know, and know that you will find somebody who will reciprocate those feelings one day. <laughs> I hope that helps, man. And thank you so much for your advice. My next one uh, comes from a guy named Zach, who I don't believe asked to be anonymous. And Zach said, "So first off, you are awesome. Ah, and I love your vids. Ah." You're just too nice. And secondly, I'm 19 years old and I live in conservative Texas. I'm gay and I have a boyfriend of seven months. He is out to his parents and I've told mine, but mine are overly Republican, conservative, Catholic people. And while I know that they love me and only want what is best for me, I'm still not allowed to do things like sleepovers at his house, even when the most sexual thing we do is cuddle and kiss while watching Netflix and eating ice cream. I guess my question is, 
I want them to meet him, but I also want more freedom, and I don't know how to go about it. Any advice? Thanks, Zach. Seven months, man, that's really commendable. And I love that you guys eat ice cream and watch Netflix, um, because that is like one of me and my, ba my boyfriend's favorite things to do. I nearly just called him my baby. He's my baby, though. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think you have a great thing going. I mean, it's a shame that you're not allowed to have sleepovers and stuff like that. I mean, you are 19, um, which is old enough, I think, to be spending nights at your boyfriend's. But if you're living under your parents' roof, um, I can understand how it's their rules. And if they're not comfortable with it yet, um, then, yeah, maybe meeting the boyfriend is a good thing. Uh, it could also backfire. That's always a possibility. Hopefully they'll meet the parents. Let, give them some time. Maybe they, I mean, seven months is a pretty good amount of time, but maybe they just need a little bit more time. Um, yeah. Okay, guys, and that's, that's it. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I gotta get back to, to this poem. I mean, I just wanna, I wanna put together a really fun thing for everyone who's been waiting for the next poem. Uh, so that was I Had Send Sunday. I'm sorry for it being short, uh, but... Nonetheless, I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for liking and subscribing and for sending me emails. Next week's I Hit Send Sunday, I'll be with my baby. Yeah, I'll be with my boyfriend next week. So, uh, we will be doing I Hit Send Sunday together. So I'm thinking we'll do a theme for this episode. And so I want uh, your questions to be about couples, you know? Like, uh, if you have any questions for me and Matt, or about couples in general that me and Matt might be able to weigh in on. Uh, we've been together for like a year and a, like a half now. Yeah, so we have like a little bit of knowledge in that sphere. Not a ton, but you know, we can help out where we can. So, uh, if you have any questions for uh, me and Matt next week, write them to ihadsendinquiries at gmail.com and uh, we will read them and we will answer them. <laughs> Even though Matt is camera shy and thinks he, look, he looks awkward, but I don't think he does. I think he always looks sexy. <laughs> don't look at me like that. You're a sloth. So I think I covered it. I'm signed with Huffington Post now and Broadband TV. Um, me and Matt are gonna host uh, I Had Send Sunday next week, so please send any questions you wanna ask me and Matt uh, to us and we will get to them. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you guys for writing in. Uh, like and subscribe, that helps me out a ton. I love doing this. Um, sorry that this one was late, <laughs> but what can you do? All right guys, I'll see you next time. Uh, bye bye